I'm him. I've been him. I will continue to be him. I'm moving different. They said goosebumps. I'm in the park chasing a goose after I did a bump. Went down to Fever Swamp, rolling fat off four bangers of werewolf hair. I'm going crazy. Be smoking on that slappy pack slime. That monster blood got me geeked slime. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Welcome back to Viewer Beware Slime. It's the show where we go over each and every episode of the Goosebumps TV series. And today is a very special episode because we're going over vampire breath. So I'm paying tribute to the realest vamp of them all, Dracula Flow. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm moving mountain slime. So far in Goosebumps, we've seen the Goosebumpy take on all kinds of different universal monster movies. We had mummies, we had werewolves, we had a Phantom of the Opera even, but we have yet to see the classic of the classic. That's the vampire story which we're getting tonight. Now, every vampire story is a little bit different, and our heroes in those stories kind of exploit those weaknesses in different ways, whether that's like daylight or classic crucifixion, or one of those weird old-timey rules where they couldn't walk into a house unless they were, you know, personally invited in, like an introverted homie. That's just common courtesy. But in Vampire Breath, I'll let you take a guess as to what the MacGuffin will be here. That's right. Breath in a tangible, bottled form. Vampire Breath is a story of two twins that are on the eve of their 13th birthday, and they're hunting for their birthday presents before they come across a secret that's much, much larger. Sure, we've seen it before, but have we seen it with a kid turning into a cockroach? I don't think so. So with that, we'll crack open the vampire's natural enemy, the natural light. Get into the story. In classic vampire movie fashion, we open with organ music and wolf howls, an iconic scene. As we enter the house, we see it's a dark, stormy night, and two parents are leaving behind their almost 13-year-old twins, Freddy and Kara Renfield. For those in the know, Renfield is Dracula's iconic familiar and servant, so we may be tipping our hand as to what the plot might be here. Anyway, once the parents are gone, the kids scour the house looking for their birthday present their parents are hiding for them. As the kids search a large shelf in the basement, they accidentally knock it over and discover a secret door that somehow leads to a gigantic torch-lit cavern. The kids wander the cavern until they come across a sanctum with a coffin stood upright in the center of the room. See ya. As the kids leave, they kick over a precariously placed bottle labeled Vampire Breath. That could be anything. I don't know, Freddy. Maybe we shouldn't open it. As the kids hold the bottle, it opens on its own to unleash a cloud of breath that gets sucked into the coffin, revealing a man inside, doing the sucking. The man chases the kids through the cave, saying he's thirsty, but after he catches up to them, he's surprisingly cordial. I'm called Nightwing. What are your names, children? Uh, I'm Kara. Me too. I mean, I'm Freddy. Kara finally asks Nightwing if he's a vampire, which he takes great offense to. I suppose that's some kind of slur to his kind. Are you a vampire? Vampire! You make me sound like a common creature of the night. I am Lord of the Undead. As Nightwing closes in to eat the kids, they notice his fangs are missing. Freddy strikes a deal that if the kids get the bottle of breath for him, he has to promise not to eat them. As the kids search the room, you realize the vampire could have just done this by himself because the floor plan is pretty open and the bottle is literally glowing. But Freddy ends up getting it first and Nightwing basically tells him he's going to break their deal as soon as he gets the bottle. So the kids just play keep away. Nightwing gets tired of the shenanigans and grabs Freddy, causing Kara to pull him away and knock both of them into an open coffin which is inexplicably attached to some kind of roller coaster track. As the kids get to the bottom of the fun slide, they realize they're in deep trouble as we pan out to see a cavern of coffins waiting to be woken up with their own bottles of vampire breath. Freddy and Kara are looking for a way out when they catch a little girl named Gwendolyn hiding from them. Gwendolyn lets the twins know that the coffins are empty right now because the rest of the vampires are out hunting for the night and she is their prisoner as they keep her around as a caretaker. 
Naturally, this would raise a lot of questions. You should ask, like, why pick a little girl as a servant? What do you eat all day? Why are you in a very old dress? But they ignore that and let her know Nightwing is after them because they have his breath bottle. You have his vampire breath? Well, part of it anyway. Well, can I see it? Sure. But as soon as he says it, Freddy realizes he lost the bottle in the coffin roller coaster, so the kids look all around for it, while Gwendolyn tells them why the breath is so important. What's the big deal of vampire breath anyway? It's everything to them. It gives them their power, their magic, and restores their memory. It keeps them immortal. While the vampires sleep during the day, they stash their breath in a little bottle. That way, if anything happens to them, their vitality is stored in a safe place. Just then, the twins hear Nightwing announce his arrival, so they hide in the coffins. But Freddy spots the bottle before hiding away. As Nightwing searches the cavern, we realize that Kara is terrible at hiding, as she keeps popping the lid of the coffin open to get a peek, and that ultimately gets her caught by the Count. Please don't hurt me! Hurt you? My dear, I wouldn't dream of it. She tries to tell him that they lost the bottle, and they can't find it, but Nightwing doesn't believe her and wants Freddy to come out as well, so he imitates her voice. <sighs> Freddy, he, he's got me! He's hurting me! Help! Help me, please! <sighs> Let her go! Freddy, a real one, immediately jumps out when he hears the sister is in trouble, and has a standoff with the Count. Freddy acts quick to keep the bottle away and tosses it to Gwendolyn, who sucks in the breath and grows a set of fangs in a really cool special effects scene. Nightwing reveals what the kids should have already known. The girl is a vampire herself and is looking to steal enough breath to become stronger than the Count. Despite the breath advantage, Nightwing is still able to wrestle the bottle away from Gwendolyn and breathe in the rest of it, restoring his youth and power. I am renewed. I remember where my fangs are. Now, for you, you are starting to bug me. After bugging Gwendolyn, Nightwing uses his new energy to chase the kids all the way back through the cavern. As the kids exit the tunnel back into the basement, they bump into their parents who are wondering what is going on before the vampire comes crashing in. Daddy, is that you? My baby girl! <laughs> oh, Pops, we thought we'd lost you! What's going on? As the kids grapple with the fact that their grandpa is a vampire, their parents reveal their own fangs and let them know that they are all vampires. But you don't get your fangs until you're 13, which the kids will be in a few minutes. Oh, oh, don't worry, they hurt a bit at first. But by the time you've had your first meal, they'll be fine. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Kara. Yeah, happy birthday. I get the top coffin. Does natural light kind of burn a little? <clears throat> so anyway, a happy ending, once and for all. The kids find their way in the world, and they're even reunited with their long-lost grandfather. All is good. And the eventual bloodbath will be family bonding. But actually in the book, the kids aren't related at all. Their last names aren't Renfield, they're Freddy Martinez and Kara Simonetti. They're just two good friends that happen to be exploring Freddy's house when they encounter the cavern that goes into the vampire chamber. Meaning that Freddy is the only one technically related to the vampires. Also in the book, the vampire breath is a little different. Instead of just being the essence of the vampire's youth and power, it's more of like a, a time travel device where the sniffer gets kind of transported back in time or forward in time depending on where they're at. It's kind of confusing. So instead of sliding down the coffin fun ramp, they go back in time. But the interactions they have with Nightwing, Martinez, and Gwendolyn are largely the same while they're in the 
cavernous area. Other than the time travel bit, they kind of stay pretty similar up until the very end when it's revealed that Nightwing Martinez is Freddy's grandpa, but he doesn't grow his fangs in yet because, you know, they just tell him it's going to happen eventually, then all three of the adults leave. So the kids just kind of explore the area until they find a medicine cabinet that has a bunch of different vials of, like, monster stuff in it, and one of them happens to be werewolf sweat, which gets dumped all over Kara somehow, so then she turns into a werewolf. Now, there's elements of each version of this story that I like. I like the episode's version of the Vampire Breath more, because it being the essence of power kind of feels more natural and right for a vampire story than, you know, traveling through time. That's just kind of overcomplicating something that shouldn't be that complicated. But, but, I do like in the book where the kids aren't related, but they are in this, like, larger realm of supernatural creatures kind of interacting with each other like the universal dark universe but much like the universal dark universe nothing really came of that it could happen but it's a neat concept to think about as far as the episode goes though i really really love getting the old classic monsters in the spotlight so that always wins brownie points with me i also really really like the uh de-aging process of nightwing martinez when he gets a little bit of the, the breath, he's kind of, you know, stronger, a little bit more, he's even stronger. And like his hair goes from like gray to black. And when he casts that bug spell on Gwendolyn, you know that's a serious dude. He's not to be played with. So the threat is real in that final chase. Overall, I'd say this is a solid four bumps out of five. Check it out. It's a good time. It's a good vampire time, even though you can kind of see where they just black out his teeth, where they say he has his fangs missing, but we were never meant to see in such clarity. We can't fault them for that. But I'll see you guys next time on Viewer Beware. My baby girl!